It's the morning after Scotland versus the Springboks at Murrayfield and I want to sort of provide some key takeaways that I took away from that game as we move forward to that very very important England test on Saturday. If you guys haven't please hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying, if you're enjoying the content we're putting our heart and soul into this content so it helps a lot if you guys hit that subscribe button leave this video a like and as always drop your opinions down in the comments I read all of them and some of you guys have some very very good takes. Now I think let's just talk about the overall match experience and kind of how it ebbed and flowed Springboks were not at their best I think let's be frank about that they were maybe at 60 70 percent there wasn't as much cohesion as there normally is in a Springbok side and I think that's because of the team Rassi Rasmus chose for that game right not really our starters or our first team but giving some guys opportunities and maybe some second string or second choice players um coming in for the Springboks but in saying that still with sort of a second string side still beating Scotland by 17 points at Murrayfield is something that shouldn't be understated and yes 17 points is a lot but I think the game was a lot lot tighter than that I think where the Springboks really exceeded was their defense I mean yes they didn't take the opportunities like when Scotland picked up that red card in the first half 20 minutes where they just didn't capitalize uh, or they did capitalize at the end with that Thomas the Toy try um, which was quite lucky we were 6-0 down in that 20 minute 20 minute period and then it was an overthrow Thomas the Toy picked up the ball and went over the try line so it just didn't click in those 20 minutes and we really should have capitalized on Scotland's error and that red card the Springboks only spent six minutes in the Scottish 22 and scored four tries so as much as there wasn't enough cohesion and sort of fluidity throughout the side once we got into the 22 we were very very clinical I mean scoring four tries with only six minutes within Scotland's 22 is very very impressive and I think that's probably the biggest positive for the Springboks coming out of that game is how ruthless they were in the 22 kind of it kind of gives like New Zealand All Blacks type of vibes speaking about someone who really created quite a lot for the Springboks box is Vili LaRue right a lot of people have been on Vili's back he should should he still be in the team shouldn't he well he was one of the standout players for me yesterday in that game against Scotland a cross kick from a pimpy he was very very creative creating quite a lot of space yes we didn't finish a lot from sort of halfway through the field but I think Vili brought his BMT brought his big his big game uh, temperament and really controlled that game nicely at the back put a couple of kicks through and played that territory game now I want to speak about Scotland's near moments right because if you looked at that game Scotland dominated that game for quite a while right the Springboks were under the pump the Springboks defense came came up very very nicely and that's another positive out of the Springbok game is yes their the, the ruthlessness but also how good they were on defense but Scotland they created a lot but great teams don't create a lot they finish a lot right so they created a lot and we knew that was going to happen with Finn Russell with their center combinations with their guys on the wing Tom Jordan was very very good for Scotland so they created a lot but they didn't finish a lot I think there was a couple of of over over passes there was a couple of knock-ons in some dire situations Tom Jordan almost got over for a try so Scotland were there and thereabouts and again the Springboks can take some comfort in the fact that their defence held up right they didn't concede a try against the very very good attacking Scottish side as Rassi Rasmus said in the post-match press conference they're one of the best teams in the world in their eyes and I think they showed why right yes the Springboks were in full strength but Scotland really put them under the pump and on another day if some of those balls go to hand it could be a completely different scoreline then the impact of the substitutions now the whole week leading up to this game there was this whole chat about the 7-1 split and the Springboks having one of the strongest benches in world rugby at the moment and we kind of saw that impact when they came on right you got Sia Khaleesi, Peter Steff, Jasper Visser, Malcolm Marks, um, Gerda Sienekamp and Vincent Koch sort of all coming on at once and there was a sort of an injection of pace for 10 minutes but then again we kind of fell flat a little bit and you got to give credit where credit's due. Scotland really turned up the tempo when that bomb squad came on but then as the Scottish uh, substitutes started coming on in about the 65th minute then you could kind of see the tide starting to shift a little bit and that the South African bomb squad sort of taking control of the game and Scotland substitutes not good enough to really match them. I think the biggest thing with the team selection against Scotland and this this impact off of the bench is that now the Springboks have so many players that are rested for 
this game coming up against England. Rassi Rasmus spoke about the, the short turnaround Sunday to Saturday game, so it's one day uh, less. And I think it was a very, very clever move because we played a B team, we won by 17 points, but now we've rested in the back line. We've rested Cheslin, Kirtley Aronser, Damien Delende, Jesse Creel. The pack is pretty well rested. Peter Steftatoy only played about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. Vincent Koch, um, Sia Khaleesi, yes, he has an injury, and that is a little bit of a concern with that swelling over his eye. There has been no news now if he's going to be available or not for England. But Rassi Rasmus and the genius that he is, yes, a couple of eyebrows were raised when he, he named that team to take on Scotland. But now the Springboks are in such a good position. Coming off a big win against Scotland, they've got almost an entire pack that's fully rested going into England. You've got almost a, a completely new back line that's rested. Probably Andre Pollard is maybe the only guy who really stays in that back line to play against England. And you've got England who just played against Australia and played all their best players. They got a couple of injuries. They went tooth and nail with Australia and eventually lost it in the end. So England are going to be depleted after that New Zealand loss, after that Australian loss. And the Springboks are, haven't even started warming up yet, right? The team that's going to play against England is going to be vastly different to the team that played against Scotland. They're going to be rested and the English are not going to be rested. They're going to be licking their wounds a little bit, which if you look at it, could maybe make them a little bit desperate and desperate teams are sometimes dangerous because they have nothing to lose and they're just going to throw absolutely everything at the Springboks. Now, if we go back to the Scottish game, a couple of highs and lows for the Springboks. Like I said, I think Valila Roo's tactical play was very, very good and you could argue that maybe he starts against England, but I think the plan was always to start Vili against Scotland and then give Apalele Fassi um, a go against England with Vili on the bench and then give Vili his 100th cap against Wales. But Vili, very, very good game. Peter Steff toy came off of the bench and made a, a massive, massive impact. I think he had like seven or eight carries, made a couple of tackles. It was a very, very good cameo from one of the best players in the world and that's exactly what you expect from a Peter Steff toy. And then Ewan Etzebeth, he hasn't had the best time uh, when he's captain the Springboks. We've lost quite a lot when he's been captain, but he led from the front yesterday ended up winning man of the match and that's exactly what you want from a captain who's not always a captain that needs to be a leader on the day and he got the job done then a couple of lows i think let's not beat around the bush quacker smith Uncharacter he had uncharacteristic errors starting for the Springboks and I think this has fueled a lot of people to say that Quacker does belong on the bench. He's one of the best impact players in world rugby coming off of the bench but starting a game is completely different and I think if we remember that and we also look at the situation like Bongi Manamba and Malcolm Marx, Bongi who had a couple of uh, overthrows in the lineout yesterday wasn't at his sharpest but because Malcolm Marx is so much better coming off of the bench that is the way we do it right where Quacka I just don't think I mean, it was uncharacteristic, probably one of his worst performances in his 50th, in his 50 games. And I, I hope he bounces back against England and I'm expecting him to come off of the bench. But he wasn't at his best, right? A couple of knock-ons. He just, I don't know, it didn't look right. And then Jaden Hendricks said there were a couple of issues there as well. Um, it just he got put under so much pressure there wasn't that fluidity at, at ruck time off of the floor you saw when Grant Williams came on he kind of changed the game a little bit because the ball was quicker it was crisper and we could create a little bit more so I'm not sure if we're going to see Jaden Hendricks against England I think they might bring Kurbis Reinach play Grant Williams off the bench or something like that but the, the, the cohesion in the team yesterday just wasn't up to standard and yes again we won by 17 points but I think the box set such high standards for themselves that they were be disappointed with that performance and you could see in the post-match press conference Rassi Erasmus was a little bit frustrated even though they, they, they did come away with a massive massive win. I think another guy who, who had a phenomenal game was Makazola Mapimpi. You give that guy a chance he's going to perform in a Springbok jersey. I can't think of any Springbok game where Makazola Mapimpi has not had a good good game for the Springboks. Yes he got a yellow card but he scored twice. He effectively shut down Blair Kinghong which was phenomenal and I think him and Kanan Moody also sort of came into his own in that second half, uh, taking some high balls off of Duan Fonamava. And if you look at that Scottish backline, their wings were very quiet. And I think that's testament to Makazulma Pimpi and Kanan Moody and maybe someone like Lukanya Am who's in that 13 channel. So although not our best performance, I do think the Springboks have a, a good platform now for the Northern Tour to go and really attack England, put our best team on the field and blow them out of the water. And then against Wales, we can sort of experiment a little bit.
it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting build up to this England game. Let me know what you guys think about these takes. What are your takes, your, your key takeaways from that Scottish game yesterday? And how can we continue to build towards this England game? If you haven't, please hit that subscribe button. Leave this video a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.